So, uh, you're, uh, you're to correct the, uh, the, the, the note to yourself. Um, I would, uh, all those in favor of approving the uh, minutes as present or as amended, uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, uh, board comment? Is there any uh, board comment that we're not covering in, in the agenda? I'm not sure. Um, the questions that Ethan had about what's going on with the FMP program and that I have, would that be covered under board comment or would that be covered in the um, Looking at his questions, Jen, I think they would probably be more fully answered at our November meeting when we're going to focus that, 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 that's on the implementation of FMP and and then you'll be here for those questions. Okay. But I'm not sure that my I want my concern to wait till November. I was just talking about Ethan's questions. His, his questions. Oh, but his questions are part of my questions as well. Okay. So I'm not sure. I mean, I can wait. I'd just like to know. Go ahead and go okay. ahead and move yeah. forward because okay. the FNP isn't on here anywhere else. So let's do it so, in the Again, I want, I'll start with Ethan's questions. I am assuming now that all FMP programs have been distributed to, to the teacher. How come, I am, I'm in full disclosure, I am teaching kids from Rochester, I'm teaching kids from Stockbridge, I'm teaching kids from all over. I get a very different reaction, okay? Um, and I'm really concerned about what's happening. Um, I spoke with Bonnie and Lindy and I, Calm down a lot towards them, um, but um, how come I ask the kids if they have read out loud and no one's read out loud until today? How come I see a spelling list in fifth grade of words that the kid wasn't even asked if she could read or not? But that's her spelling list. Um, I, I just, I just don't understand what the differences are, and I'm very concerned, as you will see when I present what an instructional tool should be, that we have spent a lot of money, a lot of money on what? Bruce, how much did we actually spend close to $560,000. Okay. It's not all F&P expense there was. How so much was so that? I, I don't know. Uh, we it was over $250,000, was not it? Um, four hundred. That's including um, uh, tier two uh, materials. Yeah, well, that's that's not going to do it. Um, what what is both of them. what are we getting? Did we get anything for free? Not for free. No. Did we get any professional development? Yes. What? We went to Leslie. And no, that was training. not. That, have they been on site? No. Okay, because that's my one of my huge concerns. Because I will tell you, I do have an example of that. I mean, if McGraw Hill had gotten that kind of a sale, we are in in June, every consultant. We are testing every single kid. We are placing them in groups. And instruction starts the second day. Why would we lose a month? We've lost a month of instruction. I see no sense of urgency, none whatsoever. And the kids that I'm teaching from Stockbridge have missed strategies. They are being confused in their learning. And I had to ask myself, would I send my kids here this time? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If my kids were younger, would I send them here? And that's very disturbing to me. And it's very disturbing what's going on. I am really being good. I know you may not think so, but I am really being good. But, and forget me, I have used a program that in 22 instructional days caught a kid up in here. No one's asking about it. I taught a kid in third grade for four years. He's now in seventh grade. First time he read it. No one's asking me about it. I have been hired by Woodstock to use this program with a kid that they can't work with. And my own district never even asked me anything. Never asked at all. And I see things in this program that are very concerning, very concerning. Forget the kids won't learn, they will learn the wrong way. And 
we've just spent $450,000? Where's the professional development? Where was f and on the ground with us, helping to unpack? I want to ask Lindsay and, and Bonnie, are the teachers not overwhelmed with the planning that they have? Truthfully, they have to be with those books. <clears throat> I think it's new. It's a new program. Obviously, they're starting from the beginning. It's a lot of work. There's no question about that. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily call it overwhelmed, but it is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I think they knew that going into it. It's all new materials. And we want to be very sure that they're uh, using them correctly. Then why aren't they here, Bonnie? Why aren't they here making they sure? Fun, fun, fun with yeah. You. Why aren't they here making sure that that's happening? We just spent four hundred fifty thousand dollars. We are off that. Okay, that's my answer, and that's my concern. It's a big one. Um, so, especially since next month is, is going to be about uh, uh, educational uh, uh, performance, can we have a presentation on what the professional development is and what the supports are around uh, Fontes and Pinnell and uh, what they're providing us so that we can understand and you know, get, get some of these answers? I, I, that, that'd be great. Um, is there going to be a representative? Can we have our sales rep or someone here from Fontes and Pinnell to explain how this implementation works? Because it seems like the person that we have on the board that has professional experience in that area uh, is thinking that that's not what the standard reality is. And I'm sure there's a sales rep or there's someone that uh, could, could phone in or could be here to help answer some questions about the program. Okay. Jay, do you, think there, do you think maybe you can come to the executive board, board meeting next month? I think it'd be good for the whole 10 past to hear kind of what your take is and where, and get them concerned or ask them questions. Yes, it's the um, third Monday. Fourth Monday. Fourth Monday? 20th of October. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I, that I neglected to say is uh, Amy Toth is finishing up uh, an introductory at the professional development opportunity. And she's about to start a um, three-credit course that is that is more professional development on the FDP materials. It just that particular course hasn't started yet. I believe she's finished her rounds in the building, so she's been in every building. I believe uh, you guys were the last school mm -hmm. coaching, which means she met with each individual teacher. And is that on the SU dime, or is that on is that something that Fonis and Pernell's provide? No, that's, that's on the supervisory. Okay. I have a, I have, I just, I have I'm looking at their website and I'm looking at the fact that they seem to have a full slate of, of paid professional development opportunities on site. Uh, PD, bring Fontes and Pinnell experts to your school. Um, and then off site, uh, read retreats, multi day institutes, da 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 da. So it does seem like they have a, 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 a full package of professional development and it does, at least in my experience with software. A lot of times in big implementation, those things, you know, they're, 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 there is a component of that, you know, we included transitioning to Blackboard, for example, I had uh, 30 hours of, of distance learning and a dozen hours of one-on-one uh, -on -one with an Okay, I'm talking on site, and they Right, right, they what, what I'm saying is that they're, 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 I, 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 I agree with you. The professional development yeah. and coaching. And that she's on site. And that, that I have some she's issues. In, but I'd like to discuss some of that during executive session because it involves a student unit of power. But yes, they do seem, it does seem that like normally professional development seems to be, at least on their marketing website, a standard component of, of their packages. And, and as long as we're, we're, and I will wait till next time, but I have some very specific questions about. Uh, the star test and the accuracy, uh, reading out loud. I just have some leveled books and how they're being structured. I okay. I, I think if you could find, if you could, if you could perhaps find, say, your top three questions. Oh no! And submit those so that they would have a chance, so that it would, it, it would be, uh, there, there, there would be a chance for for a prepared response. Okay. To have That's what I was going to suggest. If any board member had any questions, if you could get them to us at least the week before the board meeting. Okay. Then we can make sure that they have them and that they, uh, they use time effectively addressing the right questions versus. I, 
was originally, I was originally, I was going to originally say let me do the comments with page, but I've actually nailed you down to like let's go with three. Okay. Three, three bigger points or bigger questions, then we can explore it. But we need to, I, I think we need to get it into, you know, a format that we can, we can give them an opportunity to respond appropriately, and then, you know, not wait to see what gets answered a month later. Okay. Uh, is there any other word comment? Really quickly about uh, the Rochester buildings. I was speaking to Kevin Dart, I don't know if you spoke with him. Um, he used to be a maintenance manager here. I'm not sure if that's a, a bit ago. Who is it? I'm sorry, Kevin Dart. Yeah. And he, I talked to him at Farmer's Market a little bit about what was going on with the buildings and questions, and he said he'd be more than willing to speak with you guys. I can, uh, yeah. I can get his number for you. So send it that way. He, I was talking about the oil tank, so he might be a good person to talk to. Yeah, I believe Jesse's connected with him, but I will make sure. I bet you that. I believe he was, was implemented the sprinkler system over there. Right? So, so, so. Doherty.
just have like our specific building principal information on there and not have to have to sort through. Do you want to put them all up on the I'm going to put them all up on the website. Well, will the one on our website be specific to Rochester? It's an RSUD one. Right, perfect. Can you explain that to that? I don't see that. No, I. This is just came off somebody's website. Yeah, right, right. No, I think they're pretty good titles. I'm just saying, can we add spec ed to them? Yeah, and then I also, I, I was also going to say, look, can we also add the after school program? So that, you know, again, the, the, yeah. the, the more that we can point the parent at the, at the, the, the initial point of contact, that's the person that can answer their, their problem, the, the less they're going to feel like they're, they're having their chain jerked around yeah. because they left a message here yeah. and then someone else yeah. called them back and so on and so forth. Yeah. I mean, this is a great thing for us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's very smart. Janie, I'm sorry, I don't know if anyone answered your question or not, but on uh, matters involving instruction, the director of curriculum and the director of special ed are both listed in the chain. On the one, on the one we did for our son. What oh, so you was an all for all for ours. Okay. 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 Thank I, you. I asked uh, all of the principals to respond to this by <coughs> uh, with their own information for their own children. Okay. This is really good. <laughs> and Carl, you said after school period. Yes. That's one we But do they know 
that we've got to assess this because of that? We should yes. probably. Yes. Yeah, they, well, I think getting them, I think probably said yeah, yeah, let them know that, hey, this is what happened. Right. right. Absolutely. And again, if we. You still get the same dollar amount from the education Right. It's just, the, it's just, it just the, pulls differently. It's just from interest. the different accounts that it comes out of. So they, the state, the way the grants are coded is a different bucket of money that the payment has to come in from. So you still get the same amount of money, just different times. At different times. Right, it's just that we have to borrow money to pay them back or pay them interest. We'd rather right. pay them the least amount of interest as possible. Because it sounds like from what you're saying that the upshot is that the, the 68, whatever the money they in, in, issued us was far more than we, we were supposed to get in, 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 in a year, yeah. period. Yeah. So. Yeah, because you only get about 30.
letters that you yeah, put it's on. not impossible to do that. I mean, if you write up near the road where people could actually see it. Um, that's the only other option I can come up with. Mason? Um, our only options is not true. It just seems to me, as a taxpayer, this particular issue has become just put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down, and it doesn't get resolved. Put this thing right in front of the building. You're right here. People who are interested are going to read it. They're going to look at it. All I hear is negative, negative, negative. Put the sign back up and use it for the taxpayers. The people have been saying, do it. And here it is, school started, here we go. It's not gonna happen, you're burying it. That's all I see. I don't feel that we are burying it. Well, I'm not saying you. Looking at I'm looking at the administration and all I've heard constantly is it's not gonna happen. It's, you know, do, be positive and make it happen somewhere. That's all you gotta do. That's what's a request. Well, I disagree.
So it would not be able to go on the entrance to the elementary school either way. Um, but I understand your point of, of the middle, the circle, you have to come your the flow comes around the circle. But it's true, if, if we're just pushing one of the, the buildings to other use, um, Right, so would that change? Just move it again, I guess. It probably didn't cost too much to put it in. My inclination is not to put it out here, to put it more towards the high school because it is a short sign and kids are going to be climbing that. It's not a yeah, sign. I have to be concerned near the preschool playground. So but here's the other thing that we just have to be aware of. And Mason, I'm not trying to be evasive, I promise. Uh, I'm going to get a measurement, the actual height of it. One of the concerns, out on the road, it was not a problem because young sister never went out there. If we put it around down here somewhere, it will be a climbing attraction. So not to. We'll try that. It's yeah. more, <laughs> it's more <laughs> on ours. No, but it's more, I would say, when we run into problems at Stockbridge with people climbing on things they shouldn't be, like the preschool fence or something silly, mm -hmm. is when they are not during school hours or after school yeah. hours. It's like when you have that concert and everybody floods out the back doors and you're like, just walk out the building and don't walk. Yeah, don't. So we'll find, we'll find what we can do. That spot down here. We'll bring it back to November's board meeting. I, I think we'll still be able to put it in if we make a decision in the first week in November. Sure. And then you can say yay or nay on where we're going to put it. That makes sense? Yeah. It does. Okay. And then also at number 11 on the list, uh, we have hired a custodian at Stockbridge. And he started. Right. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah, so exciting. Was he there today? He was there today. I thought I saw somewhere. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I wonder, that's got to be him. Yes, yeah, it's him. <laughs> Please it tell me that's him. It wasn't more Novotny's. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So a big thank you to the Novotny's because they did fill in a couple of times to. Uh, in between while we got this figured out. But yes, we started on Monday. Awesome. So, city news. Yes. All right. So, uh, let's move on to discussion. I've, actually, which is the item that uh, uh, you were sticking around for? Let's jump to that. Just to, just to get, get which, which part Nine of Nine two, right? Uh, Nine. Nine point two. So let's do nine one and nine two. Okay. And uh, uh, do that because you're already <laughs> slumping. Uh, and I, I actually yeah. feel that we turn we have thirty minutes. Well, the, the other th one thing I was just about to say is I do feel we could probably do nine one point five and nine two, and then let her go and go back and do the 9, 1.1, 1.2, 1.1. Sure. Or unless she wants to sit around for another 30 minutes and let us go through the whole thing. Just what? I'm highlighting everything that we're not doing, so I think we can do that too. Okay. So let's start with uh, um, uh, 9.1.5. Discussing the current funds for the engineering study. So I guess what I'm saying is we could forward it for one yeah. final. Take a look at the 
when the elementary school right. elementary right. school's right. missing. Right. So those were the big things yeah, that we asked to be updated, the flood mitigation. Well, this was something that I had been asked um, when we had met in Stockbridge and we did and they walked us through it. And they walked walked us through it over the phone. That was one of the um, comments that I never saw any they said that they were going to, to add a piece about that. I never but I thought it was kind of a draft that we'd gotten in. Right. And I'm sure I'm stating just what everybody's thinking, but it's crucial when they send us this packet that it is the final packet. Right. That, yes. that it's got accurate information. We're all looking at the same thing. We all have the same information. Yeah. Right. So once those two things are double checked. And I forget what, I, what my second question were to those. I'll have to look at my email. Okay. I forget what my question was. I trust your opinion and knowledge. It wasn't and then that other thing is how many copies of reports are needed. I mean, obviously the board and one for each building, but we also talked that there were some recommendations about some public places to place the reports um, once they're finalized. So I gave that, that is a nine point. Okay. So once, like it, so if we can keep that in mind when we're discussing number, like yeah. locations, also numbers, numbers, because everybody on the committee will need a hard copy as well. I would not have a right. personal preference. I would and that is information for us to get to you, to them. Yes, so please. To. Just so they don't start printing and then they don't have to go on. Okay. Okay. And that's what I was going to say. So that, sorry, Jen, so you and I will touch. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so um, discussion to approve the funds for the um, engineering study. So we uh, talked last time uh, about the uh, general education fund that was created by the uh, Rochester School District that um, did carry forth forward into our new district. Um, that money was from the sale of Dandelion and it was put into a general education fund to help it be as least restrictive as possible so that um, it could be used anything related to educating kids um, to buy computers for scholarships for field trips uh, for advanced or lower grades, or it could be used to replace bleachers, or you know, in this case, possibly to pay for the study. Um, I know that uh, uh, I, I guess when we had talked before about the payment of for the study, I had hoped that there was uh, reserve funds carried over from both districts that we would be able to to do a kind of mix to both kind of contribute to these bills. Um, but it seems that that is not true. There's only the one reserve fund in um, the general education fund that was carried into our new district. Um, and the amount of that fund is $70,904.08. Um, and the Black River bill is uh, $28,484.48. So if we use um, that a general education fund to pay for the study that would leave us with about forty-two thousand dollars in that general education fund. I have a question. Didn't we weren't we in an executive board meeting where we had we were asking you, Bruce about funds that were put forth through Act 46 that were supposed to be used for the engineering studies, and then after there was you know the second round of consolidation, so that went through right. the there districts. Was that, there was that leftover money. There, there was leftover money. Was money. We should have the ability. We discuss that. To, yeah, we did discuss that, right? Mm -hmm. we, we should talk about accessing those funds mm -hmm. for, um, I'm sure Chelsea and Tom Bridge will probably be doing some kind of building, so building study and the people that you used it. Heard the merger, it was, yeah. Was that earmarked by the executive board to now be used for students? It was. Well, wouldn't this be a time for students to access that? To well, I mean, I, I, I don't have any magic formula for one way or the other. I mean, I mean, the only, thing, the only thing, the item don't remember being earmarked, I mean, it's merger funds, but it can't just be turned into students. school loans or, or student funds. But the only thing that I, the, the thing I remember us saying was that we wanted uh, a breakdown of that money based on, you know, the same way that we break down money for, for central office assessments, where so that, you know, that it's, it's, it's against merger bills that, or, or things that result from the merger of Grand, Granville and Hancock, if they still had legal fees or whatever, they would only be able to access a small percentage of that because they're a small percentage 
of the SU budget, whereas you know Royalton and, and Bethel's merger is you know what sixty percent of our kids so they would have access to forty percent of our kids so they would have access to like forty percent of that over. That's what I thought. The, the problem is. Sharon, should they be sharing in those funds because they didn't merge? They should not. But they have merger studies to decide whether or not they should. Um, and those were paid for, I thought. Yeah. They, they, got, they got $5,000 grants to do that. But they were at the table when we were discussing this, and they, they said, well, how about us? And but the money so only goes to merger expenses. The so money is in a fund, I think it's $82,000 for left over. And the executive board made a decision, and I guess it can be reversed, yeah. to put it aside for kids. At this point, no one has claimed any of that money. It's still there. It's, it, it's okay. I did. I, I'd love to see if, if you could find me the minutes on that meeting. That'd be great because I'd love to see that. Because the only decision I remember was that we decided we would allocate it based on kids. And as I, the way I understand that fund to work. It's for merger-related expenses, which isn't kids. You know, there's not, we can't just say, here's money for your after-school program. That's not a merger-related expense. The, if, if Stratford or, or Sharon had a merger-related expense for, you know, I, I, I would have a problem if some of those crazy um, uh, uh, Sharon, Stratford, Tunbridge conversations, you know, they tried to say, well, here, we, we had a retreat and we paid for, you know, this much food for it, that's a merger expense. We talked about that weird, we're going to make a new SU conversation. I would have a problem with that, but you can't, we can't just, just slush it into the general fund. This is not, I'm not speaking against anything you've said. The yeah, no, I, I, I'm just I'm saying, saying, I just don't think that. I'm trying to recall the history of how this was. Right. And I think at the time that they made that decision, they felt all the bills were in and things were already spoken for. And I said, what are you going to do with this? You know? Tell me, and they really—that's the only thing that they came up with. I think, um, and I can certainly retrieve those. those uh, I, yeah, I, I, I'd love to see that because I think you know certainly we're what 15 percent, so we should really only be getting 12 some thousand dollars of that 82 or whatever. You know, I don't I don't think we get to say we get it all because we still have a merger well, expense. I'm just saying that that that. You know, the, 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 the decision that I recall us making was that, and this was in, at the end of David, and then we got, what's her name, um, who was the, the business manager before you? Ginger. Ginger. We got Ginger to, we, you know, Ginger was going to look into it again, but the only thing that I recall us ever deciding was that the money was going to be allocated, you know, by district size. It wasn't just going to be who got a bill in first, or it wasn't going to be, um, you know, just just a free for all. It was going to be kind of allocated, but that, you know, I'm sure that just the point of information to, that Rose and Beth had probably used all the money that they were allotted, and maybe then some. The real savings was framed on Hancock. They didn't use any of the was in the Sure, and that's I mean I, I you know it, 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 as long as it's just. I don't mind if Bethel and, and Royalty use more than their percentage share, um, and you know they got more of, 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 of Hancock's share. That's that's that that that's fine as long as you know. Again, this is in my mind very clearly. We were talking about the merger study that was being done to understand the buildings in the course of the merger argument, you know, the, the, the merger agreements. I nearly said the merger arguments, the merger <laughs> agreements. Um, so certainly, this is this is a, a you know a, a, a valid expense. I think in, in terms of that, and well, just you know, I would rather. Funds, and I'll see if I can track stuff down. Sure. I'm again, so time, Bruce seems yeah. to think there's a be. I, I definitely like, recall there was discussion about allocating. So right. I, I there was definitely discussion about allocating based on board district board side. But I do not recall us saying that we we're just going to try to make it just for the kids. Or all right, well, let's, let's look into that so that we yep. can move on. Right. Uh, just to give you a time frame, we have like 18 minutes left in this section. Yep. So, uh, so this time we're not going to make a decision about um, whether the funds to pay for the the engineering study funding. Um, I think we should, and I think we should talk to the executive board. Yep. Great. Right. Uh, okay. So the other one was 9.2 identified. 
private fund for the sale of any RHS item will be deposited. That was the other one to have on tarot round four. Um, is there any um, so specific we, that you can get? No, no nothing specific. So we have a myriad of items at the high school, some microscopes, we have some um, elbows, we have things that we probably, by the time the ones that are in, for example, the elbows, by the time the ones that are in this building need to be replacement, replaced, it'll be like old technology, it, it won't even be being used anymore. The question for the board is, um, we need to come up with a plan for how we divest ourselves of some of these things. There's some very good microscopes over there that I think high schools would, you know, pay a moderate price for in order to get them into their inventory. We have high school soccer bowls um, that we could put online and sell to a high school that we won't be using because the PTO just bought us middle school size soccer bowls. So this is one of the policies that is going in front of the policy. Disposition of assets. Disposition of assets. Okay. Go ahead. But proceeds. Right. I thought that was the more. Question that was posed to me. Proceeds from those sales could get deposited into the Drenno Fund and earmarked for a specific project, or you can choose to deposit them into a reserve fund, one that's already established, or you can establish a new one. That takes board action, and it also takes town action if you create a new, new fund. reserve fund. And it would be my recommendation that we deposit this into that. On um, general group that general okay. education fund that the Rochester Board created and is carried through because it is one of the least restrictive funds that we have mm -hmm. um, to be able to, to for these these items. Sure, and it's, and it's it's not that we're deciding on the items now or proving that she, that they sell the items. It's more of the disposition, right? I, the, I, the money that helps with the proceeds. And I think using an existing fund is the way to go because I'm not anticipating we're talking about all twenty or thirty thousand dollars worth of items. We're talking small. Yeah, I, I think we'll probably hit five figures, but not much more than that. And yeah. let's keep in mind that that reserve fund was made with the proceeds of the Dandelion Acres sale, so it's already kind of was created to, to handle transferring funds from the right. disposition of assets in the first place. So I think it makes it makes logical sense to uh, to uh, 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 put all the folk, all the funds from any disposition uh, into there. And I would entertain a motion to do so. I make that motion. I second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to deposit uh, uh, any funds from the disposition of Rochester High School sale items into the existing uh, educational RSUD reserve fund. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Thank aye. you. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. Wow. You're welcome. All right, so then we can Go back to 9.1 if we want to dive into those. Our, 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 what do we have? 18 minutes left on that section. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Um, I felt that we should do um, start with the identify the locations where the report will be placed. Uh, that's 9.1.2. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that we put them at um, two libraries. I think the library, the Rochester Library and the, the Stockbridge Library. Yep. In the and school. Or the public library. Of course, this is open very much. Yeah, it is now. It is now? Yeah. During the day. Yes, during the day. But not at night. Where people are going to be in Yeah. Post office, too? No, I would think that. I mean, it should to be somewhere at night available because everyone works outside of town. Well, at the library, they could potentially check it out, too. Our library is not open at night. So where would it be? Um, uh, the school, website. school website online. That's an idea. I would, I would definitely, definitely, I definitely would need to put it online. Right. And I think uh, have town copies office. available at yeah, the school the office, the town office, and the public library. Uh, the two town offices. The public town offices, public libraries, and, and school offices. And school offices. Yeah. And online. Where online? School website? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Arsa. And do we have a, is our what, yeah, a website a getting there? It's getting there. It's okay. being updated. Awesome. That's exciting. Okay. Um, next, I thought we should talk about, discuss the charge of the building committee. If we go back to 911. Oh, yeah. Uh, 911, I, okay. Uh, 911 plan a public meeting. I felt that it was the committee's, um, it was going to be the, the committee's charge to create 
create those meetings and um, the okay. executive committee was okay. they're the ones and, and that kind of goes into the charge of the committee that's what I was it said. Okay. Um, so um, and you know so what I felt for the the charge of the building committee was that this initial committee should analyze the details of the report to understand what it says and why it says what it says and to um because we have a, a great bunch of information about our facilities in that, that report. Mm -hmm. That's why we got this report. It did talk, you know, um, I think the committee should be unpacking that information and then report to the communities at multiple community meetings. Yeah, I think that, I think it's, the, I think just understanding what the report says. Right. And I think understanding, I think we need to, we need to, we need to be able to do that. But I also think we need to, I don't think we need to be able to, we're not going to be like, Here's a recommendation. Correct. I, don't I do think, think we need to be able to discuss not just the, the contents of the report, but we need to have um, some information on, remember she talked about the USDA uh, Rural Communities Grants, and have some idea of just what the bonding landscape in Vermont is, so that when we're, we're talking about it, we can not just be saying, here's what the report says, but like there's a, a, a whole article that I just started reading uh, over the week and I haven't finished, but like they're talking up in Harwood about how they may close and out they may close like Moortown and Facetown elementary schools and because they need to bond out the high school to rebuild the high school and they're but the and I'm not so interested in necessarily why they're closing schools or whatever, but the, the point is the article seemed to be touching into the landscape of bond funding and and, and, and education funding and having an idea of not just what needs to be done and what that report recommends needing to be done, but having an idea of how the heck you pay for that in, 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 in Vermont these days, just so that we're not, you know, we're, we're not deciding that we have to put it all in one year's budget, or we, we have an idea of just how that process works, so that when we're explaining to the communities, here's what the report says about the buildings, we can also be explaining, and here's how education financing works in Vermont these days, so that we can be saying, you know, if, if you bond this much, it adds that much to your tax rate, and so I, on and so forth. Yeah, I th if I can just jump in your phone, I, I, think, I think that's all important information. I think there's a, I think there's a uh, absence of having the facts established around the three buildings, and I think this report was the first step in helping us do that. Yes. And so I think if the first charge to this committee could be truly understand this report, I'm going to take a risk here. I don't think any of us here understand it really well. And so Given that it just came out of four, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, well, so, yeah, the amendment yeah. was it. But to find a group of people who can take a, um, a, a concerted amount of time to really go through it and understand it, they wouldn't be presenting any recommendations to the board. Correct. They would just be saying, here are the facts in the report. Ten of us, eight of us, twelve of us, however many come together, mm -hmm. have spent a good amount of time studying this report. We now know what it says. We know what it says about the high school, about Rochester, about Stockbridge. Here are just the facts. Right. Then the board could go from there and say, okay, now we know the facts. We've established the baseline. What do we want as step two? What do we want another right. community, community group to go back to? Either that committee well, yeah. or, yeah. or another committee. Somebody may say, I, I did my study here in the first two months, and I'm uh, this is what I wanted to do. I'm not that much interested in the next phase, or I'm very interested in the next phase. Right. The, the first thing, just to get the facts out impartial, because they, they wouldn't be trying to recommend a direction. I, 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 I understand that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that I'm talking about in terms of the meeting that's held with the community, because it seemed like what, what the initial charge of the committee was to understand the report and pre present that to the community. Right. And I think it's important that in the presenting to the community bit of that, because the first the, the thing that will happen, at least my prediction is, the thing that will happen is, you'll say, okay, there's this much that needs to be done absolutely at all those buildings. We've said that in all the meetings, that there's the, 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 the red okay. light yeah. one, you know, do not pass code, do not collect $200, fix this stuff now items list, and that's fine. I mean, we put, but in the breaking down and discussing of the dollars, um, I do think there's going to be, in that pu first public meeting, there is going to be a conversation, even if there is 
no recommendation of we're picking this building, we're picking that building, we're tearing this down, we're expanding that. Even if there's no, no discussion of that, there's going to be, be people that are saying, what does this mean and how do you pay for that? And, and where does the, 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 the $2 million come from or the $5 million come from or the $500,000 come from? And being able to say, I think in some general broad strokes, these are you know, not a recommendation, but the, the, this is the, the, the status of doing bonding and, and, and financing like that in Vermont so that people can understand when, when, when something is said, here's the level of, of recommendation and renovation that needs to happen, people can understand. I'm putting on a credit card at 20%, I'm borrowing it at 3%, I'm doing whatever, just to be able to, just you know, to be able I to think answer that question. To, just to get to it, because I know we're on time on it. Um, I don't think that's a question of if we do that, I think it's a question of when we do that. And I think the first thing, since I think Amy's right, none of us really understand this report. Right. Let's delve into the report. Sure. Let's have that be the first. Then it evolves. Right. To something else. I, I, I would if we, building was built in this year, the, you know. If we, the, yes, if, if we want to say that the committee should be doing that and bringing back, that back to the board, we can certainly do that as the first step, as the first charge. I'm just, like I said, I, I, it's, the, it's the going into the, in, into the public arena. Well, um, that, 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 that's the part of it that I, I think is more than just understanding. Right, uh, and I agree with that. I agree. It's more than just understanding. And the part that seems Sorry. to have called, caused confusion up to this point is the recommendations about space and possible expansion. So Correct. I think it's key that when this committee meets, either you decide that that's for later down the road to have a different conversation, you're just focusing right. on what we have right now and what the issue is. And these things need to be done so we're efficient and we're not backtracking to find out how old an oil tank is every five years or things like that. Like, so what's your, your goal? Because you could go down the rabbit hole very quickly of how to finance some sort of renovation or addition that, that may never ever be on the table. Right, correct. So I, right. I think being crystal clear about that piece of the facts, and when we say facts, not the what ifs, we're talking about the facts that exist yeah. as issues right. in mm -hmm. all three buildings. Right and I think that would be a really good initial charge for this committee. And then I think there's a second step right. that, yeah. would, that, it will, right. that gets into the financing part and, and what are we going to do now that we know what we know. Right. And that's why we got this report. So we know what we know and we can make informed decisions. So yeah, so then the first step should be understanding the report, yeah. coming back and presenting it to the board. Rather than to the public. Yep. Did we choose members? So then if the We did. Yes, we did we do have some members already. Right. And I, I actually after that meeting I sent out some notes to try to find some Rochester representation and I did not hear back and I did not follow up because I was busy as hell. But we have uh, I, I think at the Stockbridge meeting it was you and I, Amy, and it was you and Delray. 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 And I think we should have um, uh, the two administrators Rochester. here and, and two Rochester residents. And I think that would round up the committee nicely. Well, I kind of want to get back to finish up with this chart, or maybe we need to wait and finalize it all in the November meeting. Um, that, that you're asking the, the committee to come back to the board rather than to go out to the public and hold public meetings. Yes. And so then it would be the board that is going to uh, hold the public meetings? Or the, the, the committee of the board, I would think. Oh, the, well, the public, what, which public meeting are you talking about? Okay, um, well, the board would have to hold the public meeting. All right, no, I, I guess um, I, had, I had originally envisioned, and this is just, you know, um, we're drawing on board, um, the, that the committee would get together and they would meet multiple times, they would unpack this and they would create, uh, they would learn all about it and they would have three meetings and present to the public. Um, three, three committee meetings or three public No, meetings? no, on like presentations or a presentation to the committee. Now, so here's what we've learned. Presented three different numbers. Yep. Rochester, Stockton, right. But the, Carl, you brought up about maybe the committee needed to come back and present to the board first, and then our, and then the board presents to the community. Right. Well, I think. Well, I think the. I think we need to. 
I, I'm, my concern about just unpacking the report and then presenting it to the community without, being, without having any information to discuss the, 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 the implications or what that means is going to be, I, I think, uh, uh, a frustrating meeting because I think they won't have a context to understand what, you know, what, for example, one of the things that um, we said at a couple meetings ago, uh, a way that, you know, okay, they say to, to have the appropriate amount of space in the Stockbridge building, they should build this addition on it, so there's another room. Um, you know, okay, the other, the other option to that is you, you take fifth and sixth grade out of Stockbridge, and you put fifth and sixth grade all here in Rochester, those kids are old enough to ride a bus. There's space, especially if you move into the high school building. Um, and then suddenly you have all the space and, and you, you've got a K to four in Stockbridge that's got all the room. And my concern is just like very easily we went from saying, okay, we're talking about this, this recommendation that says that there should be more room at Stockbridge, you know, to, well, do you have an expansion or do you close grades or how do you, you know, because they just understanding the report and understanding our assets is necessarily where the community wants to be. So that's where that's I'm saying. That's where the community gets right. us. If, we're, if we're going to, if we just really want to unpack the report and then really understand that and, and, and create some kind of like white paper, one page summary or something of it that we could then, you know, uh, uh, d distribute, I, I think doing that would be something to, to, to come back to the board with rather than immediately go to well, the public. With. Yeah, I think that you need to do more than just unpack the report because stuff like that, the report doesn't think, talk about. I think it's multiple phases. I think it goes yeah. back to our original statement. Like the first step is to look at it, right? and not make recommendations of space usage and what needs to happen. But hey, we should be looking at what right. Right. Well, we're building but, building all that out and then right. trying to analyze where they say here's what the space so, needs me. Well, but before even space needs, I think there's some more urgent needs that we've identified at our retreat. But we really only skimmed the surface of the right. very very top. And I think that's when you unpack that report. That's the first step, the urgent urgent stuff of the existing things we have right now. And then the second phase could be. What the what is, the what if, which opens up larger questions. Right, but I think in part of unpacking the report, it is to break down and to say, because they say, okay, well, you know, they, they put those water, the new water, you know, the appropriate water uh, uh, bubblers, uh, the ADA bubblers are kind of in a few different places. Right. But kind of collecting all that information and saying, okay, to make things, to do the work to make things ADA compliant is this. Right. You know, to try to say, one of the things they've identified is that you're doing special education in the hallway. Um, so let's try to you know, not make a recommendation about whether that should happen or not, but collect the information into that report to say that if you're going to analyze the, the, the piece about special education in the hallway to address that, we've collected the, the parts of that and we've kind of categorized it in more of an organized fashion so that you can look at that report and say, here's what, the, the, here's what, what solves the bathroom problems, here's what solves these and things. I think some of that, Carl, some of what you're saying now that I think about this, will come out of the work of this initial. Company. Yeah. One of my fears is, and I just, um, I just, I just want us to be efficient, and I want us to get to the point where people really understand. There is so much diversity right now in what people think. You know, they think that we have three. Extra, somebody asked me, why aren't you using the three extra classrooms in the Rochester Elementary? Well, there are three extra classrooms in the Rochester Elementary Building. And I'm sure there's things that come up in Stockbridge, I'm sure they come up all over. So my thought is that, that we get the facts established so that when Jenny says Stockbridge School, I get this picture. I know exactly what special ed's going on in the hallway, there's bubblers or whatever. When somebody says Rochester School, it's like there aren't three extra classrooms, there are six classrooms and they're all fully utilized by kids. I think some of that other conversation you're talking about will by nature come out of the work of this committee, but I'm afraid if we don't keep it focused enough, I'm going to use Wendy's phrase, we'll go down two or three different rabbit holes and we'll spend the whole night discussing one topic. Why are we putting an addition here or why are we putting an addition here? As opposed to really understanding what this engineering report tells us about our needs, our assets, our current situation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Then phase two, or I think there are a couple of people talking about phase two. That is where you what is, okay, this is what we all understand now to be true. There isn't, there aren't three extra classrooms, there isn't this in Stockbridge, yada yada. Then the committee can play what ifs with that at the direction of the board. What criteria do you want them to use? Right, and that's and that's and where I think that, that, that 
valuable having that what if conversation with the public I think is a valuable place to, 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 to have that. We're just saying that that would be the second. That's right. what I'm right. saying. Right, I agree. I, I agree. I don't think that the first start right second. off the bat. And the other thing, Carl, I think you're, you're, you're spot on with, and you just have to have people uh, understand that the board is heading in a direction and they, they need your trust to head in that direction. If we don't finish phase one, when we start those phase two conversations first, it's going to be this big tangled ball right. that we're going to We aren't going to be all operating from the same facts. Correct. Right. It's like that, like the getting the facts out like you did in the merger, but just get the real facts right. out. And I think that, but I think that to, 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 to wrap this up, I think the last point to keep in mind is that you know board meetings are public meetings. Saying if if you're saying that the building committee is coming back and it's okay. going to unpack the the, the results That's at this board meeting. at this board meeting, yeah. then you know. We can go. We can go through it and do the presentation. You know, kind of in the same way that when we had the representation from Black River come in and they did their presentation as part of a board meeting. Yeah, you know, we questions were limited and, and, and focus focus was 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 perhaps on other things as well. But you know, they, we we were able to kind of you know, not get go down rabbit holes. Yeah. And we'll, so then, will you plan? You you guys are going to plan when the next when the meeting is. Right. We have a report. We'll, we'll try to identify a day or two. We have to identify some rosters for people to be on that. Yeah. It would be sometimes what boards do when they configure a committee is they give the committee a timeline. They say by X. Yeah. Please oh, I think, I think we need to. I, I, I think yeah. it, I know that we'll be ready to report them at the uh, October meeting. But I think we certainly need to have at least one or two meetings by that. Yes, I agree. I still like December. November to be able to because we want to. Yeah. Put, well, well November. Is November 1st is our first meeting. So let's do December meetings. So that would be to dis it would be December 1st, it's not the first, but it would be the first meeting in December. That is two months sure. to, for the, the committee to meet uh, multiple times to really unpack it and then come back to the board and present. And yep. I think this topic is so important that we have to try very hard for that December meeting to have nothing else on the agenda but the sure. essentials approved the minutes. Right. We may have to we may have to have like an SU budget presentation, but and then and then that's it. That's what the presentation is. And then I think the committee should do it two other times, once in each community for people who can't who can't attend that meeting. Right. Even if it's an informal sort of, you know, we have a, have slides for here or yeah, okay. Uh, if it would be helpful, Carl, um, Lindy and I can try and uh, find some Rochester folks who are interested in cricket right. being on it. She, cricket. I, I was wondering about Rob Gardner. Gardner. I was going to say Rob Gardner. Yeah. I, I, believe I, he, I had mentioned something to him. He's interested. At, he is, uh, oh, is he? I don't believe you. I mean, I talked to him at Farmer's Market. Oh, People yeah. are talking about the buildings. They want to know. Sure. Well, yeah. like, Rob, Rob was, was someone that I thought I'd shot an email to after our last meeting. Well, I had heard back. Yeah. So I'll give very um, So do we need to? So we we've discussed a, a, an approved our, our charge for yep. this committee, um, and we've come up with a timeline which isn't really on here. Um, so that that planning the public meeting, which it, we've, we've decided is December first. The board meeting, the, the, first, the December board meeting. Wait, 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 phase wait. one is going to be presented at the, the December, December, first, the December board meeting. Yeah, December third. Yeah, I don't understand. December third. Okay. Um, and I thought that by talking about what the charge was and getting that all out would help identify uh, building members uh, uh, who would still be interested in being on this committee. That, you know, once we figured out what the charges, but um, one of the committee members may must have <laughs> yes. so, so at this point, we have two Left potential right. members from Stockbridge, right? Mm -hmm. yes. We're going to find, we have two names to contact from Rochester. We have we have two board members, Carl, it's Carl, we Carl, and yeah, Carl, Carl, Carl and Amy. Amy, and then um, so, yep. Okay. Can I ask a question, Bonnie and Lindy? Are we ready for Are we ready for winter? Nothing like jumping in our, in our agenda here. Just ask the question. What do you mean by ready for winter? Am I mentally ready for it? No, not you. <laughs> uh, Rochester's done some fairly significant five six thousand dollars worth of roof work on both buildings. So we hope we've signed the major leaks we had last year. We won't know until it all happens. Um, I think
think those were our only major winter issues that we could deal with right now. What about the ice jam that happens? Um, we think we've taken care of that. Right, we did do some, you guys yeah. activated it? I can't talk rooms, but I believe, I, I know we've done something to uh, mitigate that fact. Oh. There's something plugged over there yeah. and something wasn't placed correctly from our stump over. So our our run our run our yeah. up in the that's the only one that, that called it in besides the roof. That, that was a. Knock on wood, we haven't had those types of significant issues with the change in custodial. One thing that happened last year is um, Dan and Lauren the puppy filled in and made sure sidewalks were shoveled and everything was in. But the town plows the, the drive for us. Um, so we're pretty. I don't mean to get you off the agenda. No, I'm pretty. No, we're I'm just, still time. We're on a time on that. Just one quick thing I'll say. We don't have to discuss it because there isn't a solution to that. But what I will say is the Drain to the phone system is in the high school. The high school is not connected to the generator. If the power goes down, we don't have phones at Rochester. If we have a couple cell phones that work, we can stay open through the remainder of the day as long as our fire alarm system is active and that should be okay. But the next day, if the power doesn't come back on the next day, the battery back up to the fire alarm system will be gone and we won't be able to come in. Does the phone system want a battery backup? Uh, the fire alarm pieces. But the phone system is not. The, the fire alarm is either they're checking that. Um, um, really, wouldn't the fire alarm be plugged into our generator, though? So there is no battery. The brains to all the phone lines are in the high school. The, you said the. the um, uh, so when the fire alarm goes fire, off, fire alarm. Uh, a phone call is made out. Oh, I see. So, so that's just FYI. We're working on it. We'll report and it. And if we, if we needed to trench a, a, a line over to the high school, and uh, you know, it's somehow put a circuit the on there, or just you know, I mean, is there? It, we're looking into it. We're looking into okay. options to fix this situation. There isn't much else to share other than that. Okay. okay. Um, question. We're talking Mason about emergency, emergency power in winter. From Mason has a question. Oh, Mason. Uh, just this level of talking about the buildings and all this, and thinking as a community member, uh, as I stand in this space right here. I see a situation where it should be documented by film and everything should be removed and cleaned up and start over as a new school system. This space needs to speak to the taxpayers and to everyone that we're starting fresh and we're getting going. I feel like I'm in an attic when I look around here. Nothing personal, I, you know, but it should be documented, give it to the library. Let's get moving. You know, that's, and, that's and, something we've, we've, been, we've been talking about kind of. But this is low cost. This is employees going, getting to work, and, you know. You know, it's, it's, it's being respectful and sensitive to the, right. all but, the, I mean, there's not even a Central Vermont League anymore. That's gone. Um, but you know, being sensitive to the. I think sensitivity is to document it. There are some pieces that can be updated pretty quickly with the Central Vermont League not being in existence as it is here. We could probably number those schools. Take that down. We need to get a lift. We need to paint what's behind that. I mean, there is a need to do that. We have trophy cases full of high school trophies. Right. We need to, we need to probably reach out to the historical Rochester Historical the Society. Alumni. Yeah. Or something about about you know figuring out where we that have, would go. We have begun that, but as I as I you know understand what Mason's saying, there are also very strong feelings about not destroying the history of this. Yes, well, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is certainly true. So I'm we're trying to walk that myself. I mean, you see the names of these kids, and like the Parrish family, obviously for years. I mean, it's just there's right. incredible history. But I mean, the history of long yeah. way old. I mean, mm -hmm. in long term, we do have to. Purpose ourselves as a free case. I know. I think it's 36. Wow. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Uh, or moving back, right? Um, yes. Yeah, so, actually, let's, since we're talking about winter, let's roll into the generator update. Okay, that's you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, thank you to Jim Shands. He and I have been working pretty tirelessly together the past month trying to get answers on the grant. Um, the contact at the state, you call the number, this is my favorite thing ever, I'm gonna change my voice now. Um, you call the number and the woman says, please send me an email, do not leave a voicemail, and there's no mailbox. So he and I have both reached out and emailed because that was the direction he 
There's two grants that possibly you could apply for. One just opened yesterday. And we're trying to get more direction about which one our best odds are. And um, the and the woman has not responded to either of us, and we both followed up again today. Okay. So we're kind of, if we're waiting for the grant process, I think we're going to be waiting on that, unfortunately, is my answer to that. Okay. And can the, do, do you know if the grants can backfill? I, I can't even, no, is my honest answer, because I can't even get the I can't even talk to a real person. This is this something that our grant coordinator at USU can help with that we possibly have some other contacts? It's, it's all through this one woman, everything. It's through Sounds like it's a communication issue. Right. Um, oh, is it? I mean, she could ask you, she yes. could help you write the grant. I mean, she can help us and she's more than willing to help us write the grant. It's That's about it. getting the contact. You have to send this letter of intent to this woman, but before. It literally says contact her before you do so. Is she, where, is she from the federal government? Is she from the state? It's part of the emergency services of the state. So maybe Does she want to say on that? What about a signal? What about calling Sandy House and saying they're not returning our phone call? I, I do think that's the next step. I mean, Jim and I talked at length today just about our frustration that we worked pretty hard. And, and one of the grant windows is open and just opened yesterday. So we want to get right on it. Exactly. We want to at least know that we're in the right direction. It sounds like that branch, my understanding, our understanding is that branch has to recommend you, you know what I mean, like for the grant. So I tell, I'll call above. Okay, can you send me the information of who you're trying to get to help you with the whole sand? Sure. And do we have a, a drop date, de a drop dead date from our vendor as to when if we want it, if, uh, a generator to be in place for this snow season? No, I guess no. I can find out. I don't know how quickly. Because I'm guessing, yeah. I mean, as I recall, it's 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 a, it's a generator on a concrete pad, right? Right. It's got to go like walk out the front door and it'll go around but over to the side. Um, over by the two three classroom, so is where it's planned to be because right. of the electrical. Right. Well, I just, I, what, what I'm thinking about is, you know, if there's a delay in purchasing the generator itself, that you know that could be okay if the concrete was poured yeah. before the ground froze. Yeah. Oh, and okay. we want to think about maybe, you know, just check with Jim time. about when when he thinks would be the latest day to get a pad in, because you know that to me is the thing that. You know, if the generator came in November and the concrete was already poured, we could probably still install it. We may have to shovel yeah, that off or whatever. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can get but it does need concrete. Yeah. I have one more size that we're doing. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, so we're we'll done. Okay. So that's the generator, pretty much? <laughs> cool. Uh, tuition policy. Whoops. Oh, sorry. We're still backing up. All right. Yeah. Because we have to do 911 compliance too. Yep. Yep. Sorry, girl. We, uh, I want to, I think I've told you this before, but I, I really want to have something on your website that basically talks about how somebody who just moved to town, uh, you know, how they access uh, tuition, how it works, what you'll pay for, yeah. what you want. And, um, I don't know whether we put it in here, if we did. Uh, there are three in here that the policy committee is going to look at. One is uh, the one that says code C29, which was my way of uh, taking a first swipe at what that tuition policy might say to somebody. I'm not sure it's right. I, I'd like you guys to, mm -hmm. to play with it and fix it up. The other two are, uh, Admission of, of non-resident tuition students, if per chance somebody, I guess you could put um, Crandall and Hancock into that category, somebody that didn't live here but wants to come here and sure, feel. and that kind of thing, it's feel. Um, and the third one is uh, in, dict, in uh, district transfer. We had a, a discussion about that today, uh, about whether we, we don't, there's no, final decision on this or anything but 
what happens if we felt that would come and say, well, maybe a student that's currently in Rochester might do better in Stockton? And what are the mechanics around making that happen, or vice versa? Um, now that you're a unified district, that might be something that some of the other districts have looked at doing that. I've got their one at the road to do that. Uh, First Branch does that with the Tunbridge and Chelsea. They trade students if a parent is heading south and, and uh, you know, wants to drop their kid off in Tunbridge and they live on the line and they're not going north or into to Chelsea, it's easy and more convenient. Is there a form that they could fill out to be able to make that happen? So we're going to be talking about this. There's also an application form if somebody wanted to do that here. And these are all examples. Nothing's been passed or, or anything. Mm -hmm. But that's, um, that's what I kind of envisioned, the three different ways of looking at tuition. Right. We had talked last, I, I mentioned last meeting, about you know just, just thinking about before we got into a place where there are personalities involved, just having not so much about an in-district transfer that a parent necessarily uh, uh, instigates, but also about a situation where it, you know we might feel that to have the, to have a better balance of kids in the classroom, that we're going to take some third graders from Rockford from educated in Stockbridge to to have a, a, a better cohort uh, or vice versa again. So I think that's you know a fifth way of looking at it is is where not just the parent says I would rather have my kid you know go to Stockbridge because that's the way I drive or you know I don't want my kid uh, you know with other person's kid or whatever you know but it's also just that you know for educational reasons it may be it may be important to move a kid between campuses so I think having you know from the from the uh, administrative uh, educational side just an idea of how. A policy that says that, you know, that that tells parents that their kid may not go to school in Rochester even if they live in Rochester, or their kid may not go to school in Stockbridge even if they live in Stockbridge, just on just for that educational reason and just to have that out there so that should there be a, a situation whether it's related to discipline, whether it's related to related to classroom cohort and composition, that you know we can point at something and say, you know, yeah, we're, you know, your kid's going to be here for, for this reason or that reason. Yeah, you asked us, Carl, for that, and we put that when we were grouping this agenda into two meetings. We put that with the educational. Right, right, and I, I think I, I think that's where where also those policies should go to because. It all happens that education. All right, right. And just just having again before we're creating a policy to react to a situation, being able to tell parents and families and, and all have an idea of what happens when these kids need to change facilities or they're coming into the facility or whatever. I think the more we can show that we're prepared, the easier it's going to be to not have to fight on our hands with parents the thing we're making up on the spot. Perfect. So eventually, so, these are going to come back to you. I'm going to say, pass the policy committee, then they'll come back to you as a board. And we're trying really hard to get the standardized policies for the whole SU. But I also know that some boards want some things, and they don't want other things. and. So to try to balance that out, we have two that didn't pass through Sharon, and I'm going to bring that to the policy committee to see if we can if we can make a policy that'll make Sharon happy and also the rest of us happy, so we don't have to have a policy for each district in a particular subject. So okay. I don't know whether we can do that, but every other we have 45 policies now that we've approved in the last year. And all but these two have been signed off by What other two do you want to ask him? Um, I think they, they have to do with facilities and the superintendent making decisions on facilities use. That's our policy. Yeah, we said, we, we said it's the it's superintendent or, or his or her designee. I, the reality is I never make a decision on who Rochester or Stockbridge uses right. for their yeah. building. You know, when they're building, that should be delegated principles. But I felt, I think that in this particular case, uh, those board members felt like the fact that it was just put out there as I'm going to do it. I mean, they, you, Bonnie and, and Lily wouldn't even call me if it were going to be a, an issue. 
for parsimonious strategy. So for example, if it was decoding, some skills would be blending, sounds, left to right sequencing. When you present those sub-skills, the first thing we talked about is that they should be presented with language of instruction that's consistent. And what the research says is your language of instruction should have two qualities about it. Power and economy. It should be highly generalizable. It should be as concise as possible. So you're very careful and aware of your language of instruction, okay? So for example, I have, and you apply especially behavior. So my three expectations for a lesson are hands on lap, you know, but she knows it already. Hands on lap, you know, throw high from the end of the book. I want to say that every time to a kid. So all I say is, and they know it now, learn a behavior, they go right like that. That's all I say. So it's concise language of instruction. And a teacher must be aware of his or her language of instruction. So it can't just be talk about consonants and vowels. Talk about sounds. It has to be specific language of instruction. So we talk about that. The next way that we look at presenting sub skills is something called avoiding stipulation. What is stipulation? Stipulation is too many repetitions in a narrow strategy, so you don't learn to generalize, you learn to misgeneralize. So the stipulation happens in life, and an instructional tool takes on, a precise instructional tool, takes on as its responsibility to prevent stipulation. They have to build that in to their program, if you will, into their instructional tool. It comes from life stipulation. So the example I always used to give before I retired was I went weekly to LaGuardia Airport. I left on Sunday, I came back on Friday, I left on Sunday, I came back on Friday. I was always fine, always, always, because my sights were down south. Got my house back in Vermont, and suddenly I'm going to Vermont, okay? But if I put a tape, or now a DVD, whatever it is, down into my car and my mind is preoccupied, guess where I found my car? I found it over the water here. Because that's where you go most time. My water was turned off the other day. I thought, well, what can I do? Let me fill my hummingbird feeders. Wait a minute, my water's turned off. But you stipulate. Instructional tools can cause unintended consequences of learning by having stipulation. So for example, first row, you're a second grade teacher. You just finished addition and subtraction. First row of practice problems is addition. Second row of practice problems is addition. Third row of addition, fourth row subtraction. You know what those kids are going to do? They're bad. And what does the teacher end up doing? Oh, if you had looked at the sign, you would have seen. No, no. The instructional tool should have prevented that circulation from coming down. But if it's not precise, then it is not going to do that. Let me give you a math example, which I chose for Bonnie, okay? <laughs> Certainly not for me. Say fractions. <laughs> <laughs> fractions <laughs> no, it's not fractions. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I didn't know. <laughs> okay. Let's look at it. Let's look at the other side. Look at this side of the bottom one. Yep. Okay. I copied this. This was, there were ten problems. All teachers do this. If you look at the instructions, I'll read the instructions. What the instructions were for the kids was learn these key words. They will help you know when to add. Okay? They will help you know when to add. More in all, all together, total, in addition to, and sum. Circle the addition words and solve the problems. Now let's look at it. Now I'm not going to go through all of them, but let's just choose one example. The one in John bought four miniature, everyone see it? Okay. John bought four miniature cars. He already has 19. How many miniature cars does John have in all? Emily has $15 in collection. 
when the 15,000 that are there return from hospital, how many will she have in all? I, we, we, when we copied this off to train teachers, I lessened this. There were 10 problems. Four of them, so 40%, were devoted to the words in all as addition words. I give you a new problem. Kenny had 17 toys in all. Five of them were trucks. How many were dogs? Not addition, subtraction. But those kids are going to see the words in all, and I guarantee you they will take it, take it to the bank. Yeah. They will add. And again, the instructional tool has caused a victim, and we as educators continue to blame the victim. Okay? Let me show you, and I did send this out to the SU as well. Let me just show you if an instructional program has the responsibility that all learning is a function of instruction, not of the learner, then we are going to make sure that that instructional tool is precise. So we have in direct instruction, we have a correction procedure for words like robbing and roaming and pining and pining because once you double that in, or you double that constant, kids go crazy. They don't know whether it's roving or robbing or rover or robber because the magic E isn't there anymore. So we developed a generalizable correction for those words. It is, if it's vowel, consonant, vowel, you'll be the first vowel's name. So again, if it's vowel, consonant, vowel, you'll be the first vowel's name. We take five lessons to teach that rule because there are so many prerequisite skills that need to be. So the first one is, we have to know that the kids know what the first vowel is, okay? Because that's a big deal. They have to know when the first vowel is. So that's a whole lesson. Just making sure they can tell us, number one, what a vowel is, and number two, what's the first vowel. So look at it here, okay? Here the first vowel is the third letter. Here the first vowel is the second letter. Here the first vowel is the third letter. Here the first vowel is the second. It's the third, and over here it's the fourth. We do not just make the vowel the second word. Ho, ha, all those words. Because then some kids are gonna have an unintended consequence of learning and say, oh, the second letter is always the vowel. That's what it is, the second letter is always the vowel. So we make sure when we teach what is the first vowel, they have to identify whether it's the second letter, the third letter, or the fourth. Don't stipulate, it's not just the second letter. That's when an instructional tool, guys, takes on as its responsibility. The tool is responsible for instruction, okay? So that's the next one, avoid an instructional tool. The next way that we present the requisite skills, and this for me has changed my life, both my personal and professional life. Teaching and non-teaching examples. When I was a teacher, I was taught to want to teach what red is or what a table is. There's a lot of examples of what that is. Unless you teach a student, unless you teach a learner, not just what something is, but what it is not, you cause confusion and unintended consequence of learning. So, I'm going to teach you something new, guys. I'm going to teach you what the good is. And I'm going to do it using the traditional way that FNP does it and that our teachers are used to doing. Okay, so I'm going to teach you the concept of glip. All right, everybody watch on me. My turn. This is glip. And this is glip. And this is glip. And this is glip. And this is glip. Everybody wants to live. Why? No? Some of you touch. 
thing. And now what I would teach is like that. That was just teaching not very smart. That's just teaching with it. that shows you the confusion that can happen. Right. Right. Okay. All learning is function instruction. I cause you not to get the answer right through my instruction because I caused you to stipulate. Everything I touched was with one finger, but it was also white. And that's what everybody stipulated on. So when we teach something in direct instruction, we teach what it is, and we teach what it is not. So again, all that, but my turn. I'm going to teach you what lip is. This is lip. This is not lip. This is not lip. This is not lip. This is lip. This is lip, but it's not lip now. It's not lip now. It's not lip now. It's only lip now. And then, of course, I would have to use black, et cetera, et cetera. So, I'm so sorry. Every new concept is taught with teaching and non-teaching examples. Let me give you an example. We have the beauty of direct instruction for me, not just what it did, but how it taught me to correct. Because the teacher, the difference between a teacher who teaches all of his or her children or most of his or her children is the teacher who knows how to correct when that kid gets off track. So we have correction procedures of the game. Whether a child makes a consent on the sound, whatever, doesn't make a difference. We have a specific correction procedure. But the last part of Correction procedure involves teaching and non-teaching. So one of the things you find with struggling at-risk leaders is they add consonants. If the word is cat, they'll say clap. If the word is seen, they'll say steam. All right? So we correct, we do our correction procedure, and then we show, okay, well, after they sound out and do whatever, what word, kids go clap, cat. What word now? And they go clap. What word now? Cat. So we show them what the error is. A program that just teaches skills to kids does a very narrow job. This program teaches kids how to learn. So you will see, and you will see, that eventually the kids will say to me, well, show me what I did. I don't know what I did. Show me my mistake. They want to know what they did, and we never do that. We correct them, but we never show them. So that's just one example of teaching and non-teaching example, so that you make sure that that instructional tool is as precise as it possibly can be. All right, next time we'll go for more. All right, um, we are now going to identify designated employees, as what well as approve directory information. Okay, um, we have uh, two policies in our policy manual. The first is um, what's commonly called FERPA, and it's the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, and that policy um, calls for the board to identify uh, student information that can be released without parent approval. And it tends to be information that um, is things like the student's name, the address, telephone listing, date of birth, dates of attendance, um, grade level, and student ID number if it's one that has been assigned to a student. And those are, those are really for purposes of, uh, for example, we put a student ID number on um, all the state assessments. We would um, give a youngster's um, dates of attendance if it was part of an um, evaluator who was doing the comp eval. Um, even though you get the parent uh, permission to have the eval done. Um, addresses we would give out, like if Boy Scouts are looking for all second graders. Uh, we might give out names and addresses without parents approval. This information is, the, the list I just read off to you is typical of what most schools allow. And um, we need the board 
to identify what it's going to use for releasable information, and we're recommending that it be this list. Can you list them off again? Yes, ma'am. Student's name, address, telephone listing, uh, photograph, date and place of birth, dates of attendance, grade level, and student ID. Like a lot of information to be giving out to yeah, random people. I mean, it does not random. The but. requests that it really prompts for are like, if you think about that report that got uploaded with everybody's birthday, when we were trying to figure out who was a Rochester resident, and who's not all that information is in that server that gets pulled. Or if, a right, if it's not approved, and then we can't get that that information <laughs> out while we're trying to right. identify them. But you as a parent also sign off on a form yeah. at the beginning of the year that says what is acceptable to be released or if you want to be contacted ahead of time for safe work. Yeah. Like that's the other extreme of what it would be. Parents get the opt out in the year for the work that comes home. Okay. They don't want to be known, they don't want that information out in other words. Yeah. Right. I don't know about a photograph. I mean, you can take that off with you. No, yeah, the photograph just seems like a little amazing. <laughs> Quite frankly, I mean, and if you talk to me, it won't happen. Um, so we'll strike photograph. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, I saw some nods of heads. I don't know if it's everybody. Or... Well, I, I, what I'm confused about is you began by saying the directory of uh, information is, is information you can release without permission. Correct. And then they can opt out. So we need to. I think we need to make it very clear that we're we're going to release this information unless you tell us not to. Yeah, there's a warning. That's what it says in the form. Okay. For the reason that you're going to put something out, that they need to know ahead of time. This is going out. I'm telling you. I guess the thing about photograph. Let me clarify this. If uh, if someone's in taking a picture of our community meeting and they're showing the third graders holding up their whatever, if we don't have photograph in there, schools end up doing one of two things. They don't allow pictures of their kids in the paper. If somebody doesn't have the time to make contact with the parents before the deadline of the paper comes out. So those photographs don't get put in. I, I can't, Isn't photograph I can't something remember. that on the form at the beginning of the year you can specifically you can say, say no. just yeah. no yeah. Or say yes. Or only for educate, like only the school newsletter versus right. the yeah. public. Yeah. Or wasn't that the choice? Yeah, only the school newsletter. Or social media. media. Yeah. Right, right, right. To be frank, it's, it's, it's more practical for a school to track it and parents opt out than opt it's very hard, even with just 93 kids, to say, okay, you know, how many are going to know? It's right. easier to know. Like right now, I think we have four students whose parents have opted not to have their picture displayed. I, I think it's that. Right, right. so you, if you have all, all four that have said it's okay, then it doesn't need to be on this separate um, paper. Well, yes, it, it does because it's, it's opt in versus opt out. If you say we're going to be putting all this information, you know, we unless you tell us no, we can use your kids' pictures in, in, in the your newsletters or in the Herald. Except, the, right? But we signed. So there's a paperwork that you sign and you check to opt in, too. Right. It's, it's really? so now I'm really confused if there's like two things kind of doing the opposite. No. It, well, it's all the same. It, it breaks it down into two choices. Yes, you can use it only for like. School community services, yes. meaning like the school right. center or the bulletin board or whatnot, or no, not at all. all. And then the other choice is yes, you can use it for educational purposes, which could be teachers filming themselves in the classroom to watch their instruction, social media, newspaper. Right. There might be one other one. So, by us keeping photograph or removing photograph from this list, how does that affect that already signed paperwork? It means that they think it it means that the photo can't just be like, like the kid's school little photo. We just want to put it in like to school. There are issues with separated families. <coughs> sure, there's yeah, families that are protected that are right. protected from all orders. This, what I will say about this information is that um, it has not posed any problems. We have been haven't right. had any difficulties with it. Parents haven't said, you know, what's my, we're, we're very careful about information we give out. 
It's not like we routinely give out any of this, yeah. but the policy calls for the board to identify directory information, and this is the information that most schools use as directory information. And when it becomes a bigger concern is the older your kids get. High schools. High schools, in terms of information, it's really the colleges for those nine million kids with the mail, the military, and then other ones. That's when it becomes super, super right. used frequently. Right. Not so much at this level, but it's something that needs to happen. Happen because of the verbal policy. I mean, we in the past at least these doctors have approved, you know, just generally approved it because the, you know, we, we know that it's being collected that the parents have the op opportunity to opt out. Right, that's the practice that most schools use. Okay. So other than a photograph, and I'm not clear on photograph. We want to take it out, understanding that it limits the. Like, I mean, as Amy says, you've got the option to do that with the with the paperwork that goes home. Right. I think the difference is is that the family that you know the, the the family and there always are a certain percentage that don't turn those forms in, or you know you, that, that forget the permission slips or whatever. You know, if if we don't say that we're including photos, then unless you know absent that family specifically saying I you can use my kid. It's where we're saying that they're not they're, that they're not going to. So. I mean, but I don't have a kid in the school, so I feel like you, know, you guys are, 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 are the current, you three are yeah, the current would you, parents. What would you be comfortable with? I guess if I can opt out or opt in. I guess that would be my question is, are you opting in or are you opting out? Like, if somebody doesn't return the form, are you considered If we remove the photograph now, yeah. then you, you, there is no photo. Right. Right. So if we took right. photo, if we took photograph out of here and you didn't and, and Amy didn't return Katie's picture right. and they came and they took a picture of Katie doing some work, we would say to Harold, you cannot use that picture. So if photograph isn't on the list, does that restrict using any photos like for the Harold that we could only use photos that parents have explicitly said that they can right. use. That's still on the form of return. If, right. if this comes out. Yeah. Right. If it if if we leave it in and the photo was taken of the whole class um, at a field trip. If Katie was in there and, and, Amy, and Amy had said, nope, can't use my kid, we couldn't use that picture. But we wouldn't have to go through and validate everyone. I guess I'm comfortable with photograph being in there. I think there's more people that would not care than, than care. Um, like you said, we have four yeah. parents right now. It's very easy. We check pictures. Yep. We know who they are. As long as they can opt Yeah, as long as they can opt out. I feel like, I don't know about other parents, but I feel like, I mean, I don't mind my child being photographed, but I feel like if, I think that at least in Stockbridge, the parents know that if they don't, then they fill out the floor. Right. Well, I guess my question is like, concerned about it? It's on their radar. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. So and then that's the it's, it's for all of yeah. them. Right. And, and I would assume that our, our administration would really vet who is, whoever's asking for this information and not just give my right. child's photograph and date of birth to, to any right. wacky any organization. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 I can't think of any other reasons except our school newsletter that we're going to start uploading onto our webpage, and that will have pictures in it. So those would be the two things. Everything else would be directly school associated, right? Outside of the yeah. So, so that doesn't require a motion call when you're done approved. So we're 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 good with uh, the approving the uh, accepting the recommendation. Yep. All right. I would entertain a, a motion to accept the. Uh, uh, directory, uh, the FERPA directory information recommendation as presented by our administration. That's our rules. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. You've got your directory information list. Okay. The other one's a little more straightforward. Um, the prevention of harassment, hazing, bullying of students calls for what's called identified persons. And we are recommending that in Stockbridge, the identified person be uh, Lindy and Mary, and the guidance counselor, and in Rochester, be myself and Samantha Neiman, also the guidance counselor. So those would be people whose names we would put on notices in our handbook on our website, where people can easily find them if they have a complaint or concern around 
bullying, um, harassment, or anything from students. And the purpose of this policy is to make it easy for a parent, or as you get older, a student, to go to someone who is going to listen to what you're saying about what's going on. Are these the same designated employees for employee, uh, designated uh, contacts for employee harassment? Uh, I haven't seen that policy yet, but I haven't worked my way to that policy yet, but typically they are the same. I just want to make sure I knew who we were approving them for. Because oh. usually there's, there's designated employees to report. Should we, I'm putting us on the spot, should we make it interchangeable between campuses? Yes. One of us is yes, out. yes, we should make it uh, <coughs> more designated oh. for goals. Right. Right. Why not so, the nurse? Um, uh, that just <coughs> doesn't seem to have been the past practice of where students and families at least in my right, and, and we have, we have um, kept the counselor at a more uh, full-time level so that she can, they can be more inclusive with families and individuals and really walk them through everything. Okay. So, uh, Is there ever a time that you and Mary are out of the building together? That's why we just made all four for both campuses, so it would be if they were out of the building, it would be Sam or I, or if we were out of the building, it would be Mary. Sounds good. I think we're probably pretty well covered with four of us being designated persons. Right. Uh, make a motion. I'd entertain a motion to accept the administration's recommendation of the uh, uh, building principals and, or of the, the uh, co-principals and the uh, uh, campus uh, guidance counselors to be the designated uh, employees for student harassment. Family harassment reports. I don't know. Second. <laughs> the motion has been made and seconded to accept the uh, administration's recommendation for designated employees for student harassment, student and family harassment reporting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, identify date for February board meeting. We want to do that today without either, or we want to push that to November when we're talking about education. Okay. Well, you know what we're going to arrange? We need to ask people to bring the date so you're not yeah. back to the Good idea. There, that's a very good idea. Yeah, right. Well, I guess that's Put that in the minutes that, that we're all going to bring dates. Good idea. Because we keep pushing. Although, don't we call them plus ones now? I'm sorry? Dates plus one. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I just worry that we keep pushing. It's my new way, it's my new way okay. of, of, okay. of trying to make this movie really move along. I, after I, mean, after I, mean, we don't. I still think that we should all be here and we should be prepared to yep. bring dates we'll for a February board meeting, yeah, that's a, a February yep. retreat. Mm -hmm. So I just don't want us to have, hassle it out now and then have uh, right. Ethan go, yeah, but I might have brought it for a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, that brings us to uh, 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 item number 10, which is public comment. What a surprise. What a surprise. <laughs> I just want to backtrack on one of my favorite topics. And uh, before, uh, Bruce, we were talking about the inventory of some of our landscaping equipment here at the school and an electric trimmer that we have no idea if it's still here or what happened. You know, and the building principal. Right, you know, just, I mean, the taxpayers invest in equipment. Do we still have equipment? What goes on with all this stuff? You know, is it part of the employee's interest? So, anyhow, beyond that, maybe this February retreat should be talking about what's really on the minds of a lot of students around the world. And in fact, they went on strike, they left school uh, a week ago. Uh, and they're interested in the adults starting to talk about a climate um, emergency declaration. So maybe during the February retreat, this would be a topic. <coughs> you know, what I think you'll is, be hmm? excited to hear we're still firming up the gates, but we've been working with, uh, what um, agency is that woman with, about where they come in and they do the classes for the kids. Oh, the, and the, 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 yeah. I can't remember the name. I'm gonna to have to look at my email, but they're uh, um, like a climate 
educator, for lack of a better term, comes in and does workshops <laughs> with the students for a full day. And then also someone comes in and does an entire walkthrough with students and adults about energy and how it's affecting the climate and things like that. And we've set those dates of December for this, this group well, to come in. Well, that's a great direction. My cons uh, part of my concern is more also with the parents <laughs> and the children and how education and we go forward. It's, it's, right, you know, it's just right up there with reading. <laughs> is, uh, they go hand in hand. If the kids are distracted and distressed, they're not going to learn well if we adults aren't really dealing with what they're concerned about. So if, I'd like to see that part of the re retreat. And maybe ahead of time, maybe it's good to talk to the parents. I don't think, you know, maybe there's some co uh, communication asking the parents what they think about all this. Thank you, Mason. Um, we are going to need to go into executive session to discuss a student issue. So we will uh, 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 close the public portion of this meeting. But before I do, I want to uh, remind everyone out there that our next regular meeting is Tuesday, November 5th. It will be at the Stockbridge campus at 6.30. We hope to see you there. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, we'll be focused on education. I do have a question. I'm kind of feeling like maybe if you're going to have an executive session, I probably should film when you return to adjourn, if that's the okay. process. Uh, we will go to that. another room and we'll come right back. At, uh, 9.06. With uh, no action taken. Uh, our agenda is complete. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I second. I second. <laughs> A motion has been made and seconded to adjourn the October regular meeting of the Rochester Doctors Unified District. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Nay. Good night, everybody.